Okay, so good morning, everyone. Uh, today with uh, my colleague, uh, Nicolas Larousse, we're going to give you uh, quick updates in uh, 10 minutes of uh, the survey we've organized in task 7.4 of the shock project. Uh, in order to produce at the end of this year, the deliverable uh, D7.6 resources for marketplace content uh, description. Um, so um, to uh, produce this uh, deliverable, we've uh, organized and conducted a survey from February to May 2020 online survey where we've uh, created 13 questions organized into three sets. Uh, the objective of those sets were following. Uh, first, we wanted to understand the respondent profile, uh, what was his or her SSH discipline, research organization, country of residence. Uh, then we wanted to, oh, sorry. Then we wanted to better understand uh, in the second set of questions, his or her use and most common practices in terms of vocabularies. So which vocabularies he's, uh, or he or she is using? Is it aligned with other one? In which language is it available? Uh, is it outdated? Uh, is it available online, etc.? And the last small set was about engaging uh, the respondent in, um, let's say, a follow-up group activity uh, still relating to this survey within the shock project. Uh, now, the objective of this survey uh, is threefold. First, of course, conduct analyze, an analysis on the use of vocabularies within the SSH research community. Then, uh, of course, because this is integrated in Work Package 7 of the SHOP project, which is about creating the SSH open marketplace, the survey is here to support its uh, development through the mapping process. So my colleague, uh, Nicolas Larousse, will present this briefly after my presentation. And finally, uh, as this uh, workshop is an illustration, this is a complementary analysis uh, in the light of uh, other uh, activities with uh, partners, uh, but also projects, uh, since uh, we are also working with uh, the triple project, for instance, uh, as CNRS Humanum leads this project, so we're trying to find uh, synergies in general. Um, so now the results. Um, so we got in total 330 answers. Uh, but of course, we have we had to have a look at the incomplete answers as well, since there were 258 of them. We tried to see where they stopped. So that may be interesting to note for further studies. So almost 30, 40 percent of respondents stopped at the very first set of questions and the very first question sometimes, which is what is your SSH discipline? and uh, then almost 90% at the very beginning of the second set. So the fourth question, which is, do you or your organization use any vocabularies? So out of the 72 complete answers, we analyze especially the 52 yes answers to this fourth question. Um, so I'll give you still a quick overview. I'm sorry, I don't have much time. Um, so regarding the, the respondent profile, uh, they came uh, mostly from those four disciplines I've written here down. Those were the four disciplines that really stood out in the answers. So linguistics, archaeology, prehistory, sociology, and history. Uh, in the deliverable D7.6, if you're interested, we'll provide more comparison in terms of uh, respondent answers uh, with only incomplete answers, complete, and sometimes it changes. So uh, I'll say just that. Regarding now the, the type of organization, uh, those four category, again, were the most mentioned, especially uh, research performing organizations and the CNRS mostly. 20% from universities, then 
research libraries and archives were also present and research and e-infrastructure and EOSC thematic cluster a bit. Uh, for the country of residents, uh, here we may have and we have a bias uh, because since we organize it, uh, of course, we got in our channels uh, a lot of feedback when we send the survey. So almost, yeah, 39% uh, come from France and then 27 from Germany and the Netherlands. So this is the overview of the respondents. That now, uh, this is some questions I've picked up from uh, the second set. So the second set, which is about practices, to, uh, which is here to understand you, the use. So the question four was important for us because it was the, the, the main uh, questions uh, based on which we would understand who use vocabularies and how. Uh, what, so we... Uh, for this question, they had uh, 10 entries to write down um, which vocabularies they used and indicate the URL when it's available. Um, there was no uh, massively used vocabulary that really stood out from the results, from those, all those entries. Some were sometimes repeatedly mentioned, the ones I've, I've listed here. Um, and also what is important to note in the light also maybe of further studies and of our own analysis at least, is that all, although we've provided a definition at the beginning of what we, what, what we meant by vocabulary, there's clearly some different understanding from one discipline to another, from one profession to another one. So that's also something we have to take into consideration. Uh, regarding those vocabularies, for instance, question nine, uh, we note that a uh, respondent, respondent wish for those and the vocabularies they're using to be mostly aligned with Getty and Wikidata. This is the kind of answers we got. Uh, and finally, I've put last indication of the, the language that were mostly represented, so English. French, of course, again, I take into account the French uh, bias and uh, German and Spanish uh, came out the most in following. So uh, now, uh, because we only had 10 minutes, I'm going to leave the floor to uh, my colleague, Nicola. Uh, but again, I invite you to have a look at our deliverable or those who are part of the shock project to have a look at the raw results which are available in the dedicated folder and to contact me if you have any question. So as uh, Clara said before, this uh, vocabulary survey has some links, of course, with the marketplace. And uh, what, what can we do with this uh, vocabulary, with these vocabularies? So, you know, uh, as it was stated by Monica before, uh, it's crucial for discovery to have good vocabularies and used vocabularies, people that are specific disciplines are using specific vocabularies, as Clara said just before. So we need to check if we can integrate this kind of uh, vocabularies into the marketplace to describe uh, entries and uh, also to foster discoverability of the, you know, of the items in the marketplace. And uh, we, if not, because we are going to check that and to, to do uh, not a survey, but uh, to, to, to check uh, vocabularies uh, from uh, coming from shock in general, from this survey and uh, other initiative in, uh, in shock. And if it's not uh, relevant for the description of an item in the an entry item in the marketplace, we are going to consider it as a resource, uh, which is which is worth to to have somewhere and create an entry in the marketplace. So these are the two possibilities of using these vocabularies in the marketplace. Yeah. If, 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 
If we want to integrate uh, a new vocabulary in the marketplace, there are some challenges, as always. It was stated before by Monica. Uh, we need to do uh, a mapping. And uh, why do we, do we do a mapping? Because most of the, right now, it will be not the case maybe in the future, but right now the marketplace, the content of the marketplace is mostly ingested from existing sources. That means that you have already existing descriptions of uh, items, so we need to map them with the, we need to map the vocabulary used for this description to the vocabulary we want to integrate. And the good news is uh, that uh, you can do it automatically, but not totally. There is a lot of uh, manual work and human work to do to do that. So this is the end of uh, my uh, presentation. And I think Matej in uh, his presentation will give you a more uh, general point of view about the use of vocabularies within Daria. And, uh, this is one use case is a marketplace, but you have several other use cases. Thank you.